Aware of the fact that uh, when the NAC team visited here, they were referring to Blue Saxonami and asking whether you follow Blue Saxonami in your teaching and assessment. So last time when I came here, this point was raised. And um, we found that there is a need to explain what is this Blue Saxonami. And I, I have offered myself to explain what it is. But somehow things did not work out. Then there is no lockdown now. Now coincidentally I am here. So yesterday there was a discussion that at least I can give a background. In order to understand the entire taxonomy and its application, we need to work in a workshop where we take a specific objective and frame the question. But this time, uh, I am going to give you the entire background. You can say, I am setting the stage to begin with. Uh, to, to set the stage, let me give you the background. First background, uh, my own background. Uh, I have a master's in chemistry. But I have a PhD in science education. I have my entire career in science education. In 1975, I joined the Data Institute of Economic Research to conduct research in chemical physics. For one year, I was working in universal thermodynamics. But it was, this was the same time when the Mumi uh, Bhava Center for Science Education was established in the airport to conduct systematic research in science and knowledge. So they were looking for some chemist who has a social integration and who has an interest to learn something new. So they identified me and requested if I can shift to other department. Fortunately, there is a freedom in the air. So I was getting my salary from chemical physics and I was working in Homeo uh, Center. Later on, Homeo Center became a project. It was by the project to begin with funded by Data Trust, then it became a part of the Department of Energy. Now it's a very established institution. But we started in a municipal school. So since I had to work in science education, I had to learn education psychology myself. So I am a self-taught psychologist. I have not learned psychology formally. But I could establish myself to such an extent that I get now PhD thesis on psychology to assess. So that is the uh, first background. The second background is that, you see, what we now have is the formal education. What is formal education? Formal education is, there is a classroom where the learners come, teacher come, there is the interaction, they go back. And there is a fixed time schedule. There is a fixed time schedule for interaction. There is a fixed time schedule for completing the syllabus. There is a fixed time schedule for examination, etc. This is all what is called formal education. And what is called school system and college system of education. This is a direct outcome of industrial revolution. Try to understand this. The industrial revolution started in Europe in 1760 that is towards the end of 18th century. And 19th century, the very purpose of education changed. Earlier they had church run schools where they used to teach the philosophy of churches so that they can go and expand their Christianity. We also had schools run by temples. Similarly, there are madrasas established by Islamic religion. All this was going on, but that was, that was all religious. But giving a formal education and preparing manpower to run the factories which have come out of industrial revolution was the need of 19th century. And therefore you will find that this formal schools started in Europe and then it spread. 
was beginning in 19th century. In fact, it is a little funny, the very word school, English word, has come from shol, which is the Greek word, S-H-O-L-E. And that shol means, very funny, shol means leisure time. Leisure time. Well, why? Because mother and father both are going to factory. So for a child it's a leisure time. So what should child do? Should go to Shore or Shore to spend that leisure time. It then got transferred into school. Anyway. So that's how the schools were established. And the main aim in 19th century was to prepare manpower to run this show which was created out of industrial revolution. Okay, so they wanted accountant, so you have a person who will give this. They wanted some typist to give a person to give this. They wanted supervisors to look up the instruments, to create all this. This was fine and until the end of 19th century. As the 20th century began, people started thinking how the learning process takes place. Are we doing this systematically? Can it be done in a much better way? All this thinking started in the beginning of 20th century. So, though all those educational psychologists Robert Ganning, Thorndike, Skinner, they are all people who have submitted their the theory in 1930, 1940, 1920. In that period. So what came out is called learning theory. So I have written a very detailed article on this and it was published in the Lawrence, uh, you can um, read it later, how learning theory is. And based on that, people started changing their teaching style. And everything was going on well. Somewhere in the middle of 20th century, people started asking question whether what is taught has been done successfully or not. That is SSP. So when you say education, education is Syllabus. What is to be taught? Education has pedagogy. How to taught, teach? And education has a question whether I have done the job properly. And this is assessment. So people started focusing on assessment. Why I am giving you all this background? Because nothing happens in the vacuum. There has to be a culture created and that culture gives rise to think. Okay? And that and therefore what there is a need to understand what made this group led by Bloom to think of assessment. So Bloom focused totally on assessment in the middle of 20th century. Bloom's taxonomy was published in 1956. Okay, this was my second background that I wanted to give. My third background that I wanted to give is about Bloom himself. Bloom was Jew by birth. 1913, 21st February, he was born in the United States in the state of Pennsylvania. Actually, his parents migrated from Russia to U.S. Jews are, Jews, have, Jews are all the problems. Not only Second World War, every time they had the problems. And because they had a problem, they have progressed. And now Jews are controlling the entire world. Anyway, so he was a son of a Jew family. He had his own you know, all, his, all his education in Pennsylvania State. School education, college education. And after graduation, he moved to Chicago. Chicago uh, was a place of uh, a lot of academic work at that time and there was a very strong 
psychology department. And there was one professor, Tyler, who had a good name. So this person went to Chicago in 1939 for his PhD in psychology. So he worked for his PhD in psychology under Tyler. 1942, he completed his PhD and continued there and succeeded Tyler. Professor Tyler's position was given to him. So that is his background. Now, if, if you try to understand what was this decade of 1940, the decade of 1940 was Second World War. 1937 it started. It really took speed later on. 1942, USA actually participated in that. Uh, and there has been a situation where even though war was not fought on the land of USA, USA had a tremendous loss. Firstly, war gave a lot of development. Radar is the outcome of Second World War. Atom bomb is the outcome of the Second World War. So you will find uh, wars have developed many things, but at the same time, wars have brought down the economy. And uh, even though there was no fighting on the land of USA, US economy was brought down a lot because they spent a lot of money in helping the <coughs> group with the debate. And therefore, they had to revive. So they were at a stage of reviving. You know, yesterday, I told you, 1943, um, Dr. Hill came to India and to see how the revival plan should be and gave the Indian plan for India and science and technology. Similarly, there also they started thinking. And they started rethinking about education. And 1945, after the war ended, there was a Cold War. What was the Cold War? Cold War is struggle for supremacy. And superior to you. There is no fighting. But there has been a Cold War. There were two different groups. One was led by USA, another was led by USSR at that time. Okay. So US always wanted to be one up. And therefore, when in 1957, USSR launched this Sputnik, there was a tremendous halagula in USA. So 1950 is the period where people started rethinking the education. So this was the background. So first background, I gave you about myself, how I learned education psychology. Second background, I gave you about the formal education and what are the aspects. And third background, I gave you about what made Benjamin Bloom to work on this aspect. This is the background. So on this background, let us go and try to understand the process of education. I, I have said this in uh, passing, but let us understand this. See, some of these words might be new to you, because these are psychology words, they are not familiar, and go slow, don't worry. And um, even in that, if you have any question, you can stop me and ask. You don't have to worry about that. Number one is called syllabus. Sometimes this is wrongly called curriculum. But let me tell you, curriculum is not syllabus. Curriculum is all the things. What is to be taught, how to teach, and to know where, where you stand. So all this. So this is this question is what is to be taught? The second part is called pedagogy. Pedagogy study. So, pedag how to treat a child is called pedagogy. From this comes pediatrician, the doctor who treats one. From this comes pedagogue who deals with the children. So, this is pedagogy. Pedagogy is teaching method. And actually, this is answer to. How to teach? Okay, and third 
This is called assessment. And in the question form, I will say, where do you stand? So these are the three questions. One is, what is to be taught? Which is the syllabus that is given to us by the university? How to teach? This is told to us by learning theories. And at some stage I will speak on learning theories also. From behaviorism, they have now come, come to constructivism. Earlier when Thardaik was saying, he was saying that what I have to do is I have to modify your behavior. So in order to modify your behavior, I am teaching you. So this was called behavioristic. Then came Piaget on the scene, a Swiss um, biologist actually, he was not a psychologist, he was a biologist. He came on the scene and he said, you know, you are treating human beings like rats and cats. They have a brain. So there should be a, there is a cognitive schema, you should think of it um, differently. So came cognitivistic approach. From behavior approach to cognitivistic. Then the focus was on developing cognition. And fi finally, Vygotsky, a Russian uh, psychologist came forward and said, actually when you teach, you don't transfer the information. You help the child to construct his or her own knowledge. And that is constructive. It's a very broad uh, classification of learning theories. We'll speak about it sometime later. But that tells us how to teach. Now my question is, where do I stand? You have told me this to, to be taught. You have told me how to teach what you have done. My question is where do I stand? Where I stand? Have I succeeded in doing this? And that is the entire work of Benjamin Bloom is in this domain called assessment. Now in assessment there are two categories. One is called formative. And another is called summing. There is a very book, big book by Benjamin Bloom. It's called Handbook of Formative and Summative Assessment. Very, very thick a handbook. And it's written in a very simple language in detail. What is formative? Formative is while you are Action is going on. So you have said you have taught karma cycle. I am taking example in of karma cycle because it comes in. <coughs> so you have taught karma cycle for about say 35 40 minutes. And towards the end of your session, you want to know whether it has percolated in the industry or not. So you ask questions, try to understand whether you know, message has been transferred and the school or not. This is formative language. You are doing it yourself. And by the end of the day, you understand, no, whatever purpose I had, I did not succeed. So I need to come back and teach this in a different way, perform the activity, give example, whatever it may be. So this is your own assessment and the assessment of the understanding of children. That is formative. But at the end of the semester, you conduct examination. At the end of the year, you conduct examination many times. At the end of the entire course, examination is called summative examination because you are taking into account the entire whether the child has understood or not. So, this person, Guru, focuses on both. This is called formative evaluation and the same and also summative evaluation. Okay? This is clear up to this. Now let us go little deep and try to understand what is the purpose of education? Why we? Why we? See, 
multicellular organism teaches to its offspring. You take even birds, birds teach how to nest. Even hen teaches many things to uh, the child. Cats teaches. They are all very certain of animal teaches how to survive in this world. Human beings have the facility of language and therefore their teaching method and our teaching method is different. This is the facility and therefore I can tell you what might have happened in 1664 to Newton. I can tell you that I was not there, I have not seen him, but I can tell you what might have happened. It's because of the linguistic element. The language is our major uh, tool to transfer knowledge. So in doing that, we have three objectives. Number one is called intellectual development. We want to achieve intellectual development among the learners, whoever. And that in the language of Bloom is called cognitive domain. So cognitive domain. Cognitive is or intellectual. Okay. See, it is often said that giving information in giving knowledge is not the whole purpose. But this child should also have some emotional development, emotional attachment, positive attitude. Many times we say a person who oh, he studied so much science for the reason have a scientific attitude. Okay? So because attitude has not been developed. That is another aspect which is called affective. I use the word, simple word, this is emotional. Affective domain. This has connection with emotion. This has connection with intellect. Okay. And the third word is called unity. Domain. This is the connection with action. Earlier they were calling skills, but you know the skill is also used with um, intelligence, sometimes intellectual skills, etc. Therefore, they have now started calling action. So, our objective is to achieve intellectual development among the learner. Our objective is to achieve emotional development among the learner. And our objective is to achieve development of certain skills. Say for example, in engineering, engineering is a lot of skills. So somebody should be able to <coughs> manipulate the lathe machine. Uh, so in chemistry laboratory, and if the child comes out and he doesn't know how I how to heat um, in the test tube, there's it's, it's no, no use of studying um, that subject or someone who cannot handle the telescope, then we will say, what, what physics did you see? Learn. Okay. These are the skills that uh, we expect. So we have the cognitive domain, for which we have to work. We have the affective domain, which is related to emotion, which is attitude, feeling, etc. etc. And I will explain as well of each of this later. And this is cognitive. Keep this term in mind. Now comes the real work of uh, uh, Benjamin Bloom. Uh, Benjamin Bloom focused on this and this. This he did not work much in his time. 1956 publication, there is not much reference to Kuwait. He has only said that. But later on people worked on this. 2001, the entire taxonomy 
बंद मोड़ी पर। I hope you know the word taxonomy. This is the word in biology is very familiar. There is a in biology is a word called taxonomy. Taxonomy of plants. Taxonomy of animals. Taxonomy in simple terms means classification. You categorize. You classify. Okay. Now what I am going to do is I am going to classify cognitive domain into six categories, and that those six categories have a certain hierarchy. So I will first use the words that were used by Bloom to begin with. He has used nouns. So he said the first aspect of cognitive domain is knowledge. You must know this principle. You must know how a certain thing works. What is this principle? What is that principle? Etc. You can think of examples from your uh, engineering background or basic physics or chemistry, whatever. Say, someone must know Faraday's law of electrolysis. Unless you know that, you cannot think of electroplating. There is a lot of electroplating work. Yes. Or um, electromagnetic induction. Faraday is my godfather. So I will record Faraday. So, so for Faraday, electromagnetic induction, unless you know that, you will not be able to run the thermal power stations or hydraulic power stations. Because the magnetic lines are going to be cut and then only directed. So those, this is the part of knowledge. The second part which he said was comprehension. There are all uh, nouns I am telling you. 2001 it was never converted to words. Third is application. I first note down and then explain this. Comprehension is basically understanding. People then uh, time remember. Let me give you an example. So I I, I had my Marathi medium education until 11th standard and I entered into BSc English medium. And uh, our professor taught us first law of thermodynamics. Unless and until a force is acted upon a body, it continues the state of rest or will form motion. Sometime 1978, remember it. I have not understood. Why? Because I did not know the real meaning of the phrase unless and until. And later on I searched that Isaac Newton did not use such a complicated language. Isaac Newton simply says, consider a point object. This is the language used by Isaac Newton. Our people with writing textbooks have made it complicated. They say, he says, consider a point object. Point object, the first sentence, to stop. If it is at rest, it will remain at rest if you don't apply a book. Full stop. So, if it is moving, it will remain moving if you don't apply force. He has given first law of motion in three sentences. Our intellect, intellectual people translated this into unless and until a force is acted upon the body, it continues the state of rest or of uniform motion. Have I understood first law? Do I know first law of motion? I know. Have I understood? I translated it. And let me give another example. This first year, there was a question. Describe the salient features of Bohr's atomic theory. So we were about 40 students in the classroom. I was the only person who answered it. And then I asked others, they said, a salient magic I had. So they were not knowing <laughs> what does salient mean. Okay, I also did not know, to be frank. I also did not, but I said, anyway, what else can you do? You write both theory, write both theory, you good. So, what I am trying to tell you is, many times it is 
understanding is not there, and therefore he gives focus to comprehension. Third is application. You expect that it's as and the difficulty level is going, right? Expectation level is high. Third is application. You should be able to apply the knowledge. And if you don't apply the knowledge, you know what happens? The Ganesha from Kashmir to Kanyakumari start drinking milk. Even though we have such a huge scientific manpower, no one challenged it. Fortunately, I was in Australia at that time, so I was not here. So someone in Australia asked me, oh, what has happened? I said, I don't know. Until I was there, <laughs> Ganesh was not drinking, but now much. He must be feeling thirsty. But that was the answer. That was not the answer. It's because it has, the, the concept has not got percolated. We say we have people who know science. But where is the scientific attitude? We learn a lot of mathematics. Where is mathematical literacy? So I was working in the tribal areas. This was close to Bodegao in Pune district. And I asked um, the person, where is this, this village? He said, no, you can. It was 10 million. <laughs> this is lack of mathematics. So what I am trying to tell you is, you might have information, but you don't have real ability to apply. You don't have real comprehension. And therefore, we, this person gives importance to this category. This is the application. Then comes analysis. This is a very critical concept. You should have an ability to analyze the situation. Whenever we have a difficulty in our life to come across, emotionally we get excited. But analyze the situation and try to look for the answer. This skill comes to education, to learning. And then synthesis. Synthesis and finally is evaluation. I'll explain what does it mean. Synthesis is put things together and create something new. Okay, so then only we say that the child has really understood and the knowledge got percolated. It then got the topmost priority which I tell you later. And evaluation is you should be yourself able to evaluate, evaluate and assess whether the thing is going properly, correct or not. There is no need to consult anyone. You should have the ability to evaluate it as whatever it be, whether it is a learning uh, concept, whether it is a situation, whether it is a problem solving, whatever it be. This was the categories given in 1956. And as you are showing me, there are words that are used to assess in each of these data. For example, define. When you say define, so what you are testing is the first. When you are asking how this you know concept applies in a so other categories, you are using the um, application. So, when people realize that finally it is the word and you might be knowing that uh, English is strong in word. Our language is not strong in word. And therefore, in English it is called verbal capability. It is called verbal capability. English is very strong in English. We are very strong in adjectives. Our Indian languages are very strong in adjectives and Nouns, but very strong in it. They are very strong in it. Anyway, 
So they then decided that this noun term should be changed to words. And what they have said, this, this is 2001. This should this in word form should remember. Should be called as remember. Should be called as remember. How do you know whether someone has an knowledge? If the child can tell you from his or her memory. So they have changed it to remember. Then comprehension they have changed to understand. Possibly I don't have any habit of using this. So understand is the word for somebody. Then application is of course application is the noun and apply is the word. This of course analysis is the noun. Analyze. is the word. Synthesis is the noun. Create is the word. And evaluation remains evaluation. Evaluate. The word for evaluation is evaluated. Now one important thing which I would like to in 2001 revision, they have changed the hierarchy. They have said that, you know, this, this is a difficulty level, an expectations level. So this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Here, the sequence should be This is shown as a pyramid, you know, like hierarchy. So there, the, this comes at the bottom, and this comes at the top. You know, have it in this picture. This is unit pyramid, and they have given specific words to the assessors to be used to assess it. Now, what should be the percentage of this, what should be the percentage of this, is all decided by either the university or the school board or an institution. But what this indicates, they don't be complacent with this. See, most of the education system evaluates only memory. That's why people go on remembering, remembering and reproducing and after reproduction, nothing remains. There is no understanding as such. But, what is expected in the 21st century is that only memory is not going to suffice you for your lifetime. Because the world is changing so fast. Technological developments are occurring so fast. Social interactions are occurring very differently. Try to remember now. Just just think of think of last ten years. We have now moved to smartphones. Okay, and you can do variety of things. You can have your bank bank transaction done. You can book your rail ticket. You can communicate to someone, you can transfer money on Google Pay to someone. Variety of things can be done by just an instrument for which you have to travel a lot earlier. Now with this pandemic, they have started conducting 
webinars. Advantages or no advantages, I don't know. But this has been a boon to many of us. I can now listen to lectures sitting at my home for which I could have not gone and attended. The other day I was listening to a lecture by a professor from USA who has studied lost notebooks of Ramana. He has spent entire life on that. I, I knew his name. This one professor I knew. But this was an opportunity for me to listen to him for one hour because of the technology. Things have changed. So because things have changed, you have to also change your mode of thinking. Many times happen, happen, I say after the Industrial Revolution, what was taught was different. After the Industrial Revolution, what was taught is different. And after the Information Revolution, what is taught is also different. Methods also change. Okay? And therefore, one has to be aware of all these aspects and how to assess them. Assessing creativity. Assessing ability to evaluate is not that simple. And as, as our education system goes, we are more familiar and trained for the first, second to some extent. But there is now a need to prepare new generation who can think creatively. And now people, people say, because we need problem solvers. We don't need problem creators. There is a, there is a term called CMI, contextualize multiple intelligence. I write CMI. It's called contextualize multiple intelligence. What is intelligence? Everyone knows. Multiple. Because people have different intelligence. Someone is good at speaking, someone is good at music, someone is good at sports. But all that has to be used in a context. If and that is the need of the day. Presently, our education system demands that we develop people who are CMI train who can use this CMI and in order to achieve that all these aspects are required. Now at play, I am not going into details of this but sometime later um, we will have a workshop and what we will do is we will try to frame questions to assess each of these. What type of questions are to be framed? Which word is to be used? How do you know whether that particular skill has been assessed, etc.? We will think uh, in detail later. This was only uh, background. So, after a cognitive domain, this is clear up to this cognitive domain. Let me go to affective domain. Affective domain, which I told you, is about attitude, emotion, and feelings. These are the aspects. And in affective domain, there are five categories. Taxonomy is classification. So, there are five categories. Each category. Children have learned 
I cannot get it. I have completed my syllabus. I have uh, completed my class book, etc. Can I guarantee you don't have learned? I cannot because I am not sure whether they were added to. At that sort of time, I mean, they might be thinking of something else. They might be looking at me, but might be thinking at something else. So, an important skill of education is to develop attentiveness. The first important quality of an educated person is they listen to you carefully. Okay? What is the speciality of Prakash Amte? Speciality of Prakash Amte is he listens to tribal people carefully. He doesn't speak much. Chandi Banyan just goes in the tribal area. He listens to them. He might not solve problem immediately because it's not uh, in that, but he might be trying. He listens. So listening. And this listening is most important in his profession. Doctor's profession. When you go and tell the doctor, oh, mother cook the tail. He's listening. He himself is so very important. So when someone comes to us, a lot of complaint. Listening is an important. Advocates need to have these skills. So similarly, so I am giving you at a professional level, but at a student level, there is a there is a term, word called listening comprehension. And there is also a term called reading comprehension. If you have developed these two skills, you are a lifelong learner. Listening comprehension, sometimes, uh, I don't know whether you have read that book, Be Foolish. There is a book written by an IM and graduate of Ahmedabad. They say, Be Foolish. What does it mean? Show that you are ignorant. So someone will tell you. When you, actually, when you will actually learn when someone else is speaking. When you are speaking, you don't learn because you tell what you know. When you are listening to someone, you learn much more. So, developing the skill of listening, the attitude of listening is an important aspect and which we try to do from grade 1 to grade 2. Sometimes it is done to an extreme. But uh, you know, if you go to grade 1, you will find that most of the students are speaking and the teacher usually gets uh, little time. In grade 4, all the students get quiet and only teacher speaks. It's an experiment, but at the same time, uh, listening uh, still is the word. The second is called responding. Responding is responding positively to someone's question, someone's request. So, so someone yesterday said, Will you please uh, tell us something about Blue Moon Tax So I have responded. I could have said, Oh, I need preparation time. Uh, oh, I have read it uh, 30 years ago, I, I will have to revise it, etc. I could have done that, but that is not a proper response. You need to respond properly. As a teacher, you have to, to have a responsibility of responding to the needs of the child. As a child and a student, they have a duty to respond to the demands of the education system. It could be examination system, it could be classroom. Wait, etc. Et Someone coming late clearly means he is not responding properly to the task given. Okay. The third is value. Value. You need to value the task. If I know this classroom is of no use, uh, what I am going to get here. If I come with a negative attitude, suddenly I am not attentive. I might be 
doing something else. Uh, there are many students. You be at a little higher level. We assume that they are professionally motivated. They are coming to become engineers, etc. But at the school level, you will find there are large number of students, especially with the expansion of school system. There are students who are coming for whom there is no tradition of education at home, uh, and they are they are they are mediocre. And there are there are variety of variety of um, reasons for negligence also. Uh, in, a, in a funny um, uh, situation, I would like to share one of my experiences. So, I would like to share one of my experiences. So, I would like to share one of my experiences. I would like to share one of my experiences. I would like to share one of my experiences. I would like to share one of my experiences. I would like to share one of my experiences. मराठी प्राथमिक शाळा होती शिक्षकांना शिक्षकांना असं सांगण्यात आलं की कुठलाही घटक शिकवायचा असेल तर तो एकदम माहिती न देता त्याला मुलांकडनं उत्तरं घ्यावे पार्श्वभूमी निर्माण करावी त्याला दाताचं आरोग्य शिकवायचं दात स्वच्छ ठेवले पाहिजे नाही त्याला आरोग्य असं शिकवायचं आरोग्याच्या सवयी तर त्याने शिक्षकांनी प्रश्न विचारला की अपन जब दात रोज घास लेते हैं कहाँ? ते नॉर्मली वर्गा में लेकर दिन गोवे का अगर माय मारू उठी मैं हम जाएं विजय वर्षी बाज़ चल मूड पे खड़े हो दूसरा दाता ले वाज़ ही नहीं मैं मैं वैसे भी मुझे करता हूँ दाता ले वाज़ ही नहीं चल एंड तो उन घान वाली होती क्या ऐसे कहते हैं तेरे चुनचुनी जरा मुलगा पुजे करते हैं ला तलाटा का मुलगा होता है दाद जर रोज घसते रहे तो आरोप जला पाए हुए चापास अंदरे दाद जर रोज घसते रहे तो आरोप जला उपाय हुए रोगिया ला रोगिया ला उपाय हुए और आरोप जो अन्य उपाय है अनुभव का संकल्प आया तो मैं पढ़े जाए मैंने वहाँ पढ़ों में जैसे कब जाने के लिए तो कर रहा है तो what attitude this person will develop so this boy or a girl slowly develop anyway my answer is not going to be accepted so keep quiet so in order that the child responds with his or her own opinion one has to develop a culture where this is accepted. So this is the skill which I wanted to explain. Valuing I have given the human. Then, then comes the fourth aspect which is called organization. It is called organizing. Fifth is Characterizing. One second, let me explain. Explain what is organization. What is it? We put together things. We put together things. And this is all at the emotional level. It's all we are worrying about affective. We are synthesis in cognitive domain and organization in the affective domain. There are two different. That there you are putting information and knowledge together here. It's emotional organization. You are learning the entire thing. You do this now. You do that now, etc., etc. These all they are all the skills. So I have been often saying that human beings get 24 hours. This 24 hours are divided into three parts. One is called committed time. You are committed to something. If you are a teacher, you are committed to teaching. If you are a doctor, you are committed to uh, sitting in the uh, clinic. If you are a clerk, you are committed to work with your office. All this. This is about one third of it. Then there is a maintenance time. You have to sleep, you have to take bath, you have to eat food, etc. 
and there is a laser tag. Okay, all successful people have become successful because they have used their laser tag. Committed time you have to anyway give. Um, this uh, uh, another maintenance time you have to anyway give. They have used their laser time fruitfully, and this is what is called time management. And it is expected that this will. The great example is Albert Einstein. The entire Albert Einstein's research is done at home in the laser tag. He was a clerk. He was a clerk in the patent office. So he used to work nine to five. And after coming home, whatever laser tag he had, he used to write down. Another best example is Chandrasekhar Venkatraman. Chandrasekhar Venkatraman conducted his research in the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science after his job at the government uh, office. He was the auditor general. Then, of course, he left the job. But the basic work was done at the Indian Association for Cultivation of Science in the evening with, of course, great uh, scientists like Maynard Sah, Jagdish Chandra Bose, S.N. Bose, Prabhupada Chandra Ray, the big people. So what I am trying to tell you here is all this organization, time organization, resource organization, the most important skill, resource organization. How many clothes do you have? How do you address them? How, 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 how much money you get? How do you manage them? The resource organization, resource planning. So all this comes, these are all emotional aspects which get developed. Uh, characterizing by average. Characterizing is basically it, it's it's uh, it's abstract knowledge. Everything uh, comes to you just to go to remember to uh, look at this essential aspect. Uh, once again, as I was telling you, we'll have each of this taken and try to see how this is assessed practically in a workshop. Just give it one example uh, this morning. I am trying to give you an example that, for, that is for explanation. But if you really assess what type of questions are to be framed, we will uh, tell you. Uh, most of the time people limit themselves at the cognitive. They don't uh, go to affect you. But there is a need to go. And as I told you, cognitive and affective were work out work, work, work by and he did not work out the quantity, that is the third, which I tell you, which was done by people later, the psychologist, and there are, there are also once again the big list, it's called quantity. Uh, 
some of them came and what are you asking them what are you doing so one person said don't you see i am breaking the stone the second one said no i have been given the work of breaking the stone the third one said i am creating a temple so this is the perception of the world and of course the output would be different different for the person Mindset. Then there is a guided response. Once again, as I told you, I will see. Let me give you an example of music. If, if you have to create a certain kind of music. There is a certain sequence, one after the other, and uh, I don't know whether you have seen these musicians. They act like this, okay? So, but this action is helpful to the musicians to create a melody. You know, it doesn't happen that uh, anyone uh, start uh, creating sound. No. This action has a meaning, and there is a sequence, and therefore you have the wonderful melody. So this all comes from the action that has been generated through your training. No, simple. You, you go to some some um, repairing shop, say vehicle repair. You know there are professionals. There are many professionals. They do it so well in the shortest possible time. Oh, it's not easy to get. And then they do it. Other people, other people, you know, create problems and all this. So this all happens in all other professions. It's all because of the cognitive skills. Then there is a mechanism which is working. So maybe I can give you the example of driving, where there is a specific sequence to follow. One after the other, and then and these are all acquisition of action skills. I must say intellectual skills. Then there is a adaptation. Adaptation is you adjust to the situation, and there is a sixth, which is called origination. origination is you work out a different method of achieving something say purify water there are methods no but you adopt a certain method based on your knowledge and skills so these are the six aspects in cognitive work we had six aspects in cognitive five aspects in affective and cognitive work what he has done is he has tried to classify that's why it's called tax taxonomy he has tried to classify all the three categories and as i told you most of the time we focus on the only first aspect cognitive within first we focus on its first a okay so we have to go from first a to um, f to do think at the same time we have to worry about this which uh, will be later now let me Sort of summarize what I am trying to say. Many times it is said that education is three H. What is three H? Head, heart, and hand. In this, there is an assumption that emotion is in heart. Science has proved that it is not true. But anyway. It's a belief, at least the poets uh, use it, and we also experience that if there is something um, funny occurring, unexpected occurring, heartbeat increases, so it is always related. So that this H is heart means related to emotion, so intellect, emotion, action. So we want education to develop all the three aspects, which is called holistic development. 
is the term now is the is coming is called holistic development holistic development of the person creating parents who can reproduce the information is not enough at least for the 21st century 21st century needs and requirements are very different than 1990 and therefore we have a major goal of developing all the three H's. And one more thing which I would like to tell you is that we Indians have a bad habit of respecting whatever comes from Western countries. Try to look at our own education system. We are a global system. Sri Krishna and Sudama went to Sandipani Dasha. We do sometimes go to Hindu we were to see this country, still call it Sandhya Pranayas. What was the method? Method was holistic development. They were given knowledge. Their attitude, their emotions, all this was developed. And the skills, they have to milk the cow, they have to graze the cow, they have to, go, have to sell the uh, curd, ghee, so the holistic development has been the practice of Indian Gurukul education system. Only thing is, we have not worked out these details and we have not publicized. So we have been always behind publishing and telling that this is what I have done. And we have never worried about taking patent. To give you the best example is Jagdish Chandra Bose. 1895, he demonstrated that radio signals can be used to transfer sound waves from one place to another at the Royal Society in London, 1895. So after that, one newspaper reporter asked him, Sir, you are, you are such a great player. Sir, are you thinking of patenting it? He said, no. This is a knowledge for the society. I don't want to make many money out of it. And it was Marconi who stole all this uh, and, and, and also got Nobel Prize for that. So what I am trying to tell you is this has never been our tradition of patenting something like this. But if you look at our Gurukul system of education, there has always been a uh, holistic education. So many times I advise, look back and you will get a lot of answers. Somehow, we are blinded by the Western thinking. It's good that they have done it systematically. It's not, it's not their fault. There are nothing available, they have done it. But this was done in the middle of the 20th century. And it is being used, started from the University of Chicago. And then uh, it came to Europe. And from Europe, of course, it came to us to British education system. And this is not nothing wrong, nothing bad. But holistic education has been our tradition. We, are, we, we have to actually, we are actually going back by following Bloom. We are not going away. We are following our own traditions by doing this. So this is where I would like to stop. If you have any question, you can ask, if you have any comment, you can. But I promise you I will spare two days, come here and uh, Taking each point, we will have a workshop where we frame questions and uh, try them, try them out, how students respond, because language is also a problem. What verb you use is also a mixed different meaning, all this will have a different So thank you very much for your patience.